This is the Rod Langway Fan Club. Welcome to the Rod Langway Fan Club Podcast. I am your host, Jeff Roman. This is our special 2024 trade deadline review. I'm joined by a couple of co-hosts who I was unable to move at the deadline. Mr. Mark Chaknita. Yeah, I was not willing to waive my no trade clause. Uh, you guys are stuck with me for the next while. And John Snowden. No takers for me this year, unfortunately, so I'm staying put. Well, we're still glad to have you, John. Uh, another trade deadline has come and gone. What do we think? I love trades. I mean, those of you that play fantasy hockey with me know that I'm a man who enjoys to make a trade. I like talking trades. I like anything related to trades. Yeah, it certainly is a fun time of the year, especially gearing up for the playoffs here. So uh, we're going to break down the teams that we think position themselves best to compete for Lord Stanley's Cup. Yeah, I think the first one we got to talk about, there are a lot of salty people online talking about this team and how they're always cheating the Vegas Golden Knights. Again, they've done it again. Yes, they sure have. Um, not without some controversy, but let's break down the players that they did pick up here. Yeah, I think the biggest acquisition for them is Noah Hannafin. Uh, this is the big defenseman that was on the market, and they kind of slid in the side door. No one really talking about Vegas as a destination, and what an embarrassment of riches they now have on the blue line. Yeah, this is a team that didn't have a lot of speed on the blue line. I think that could be one criticism of them, but uh, Hannafin helps out a lot. Yeah, for sure. An already scary decor, but they didn't stop there. I mean, they also went out and got Anthony Mantha. Uh, this was a guy who was playing pretty well for the Washington Capitals. He's a big body, but he's never quite lived up to some of the expectations we had earlier in his career. Yeah, no questioning this man's talent, uh, the desire, commitments to get dirty. Uh, that has been questioned. He's a big guy. If he can use that big body in the playoffs, though, watch out. He could be a really good under-the-radar acquisition for them. And in another surprise move, they picked up Tomas Hertel from the San Jose Sharks. Yes, big surprise. Not too many people saw this coming. Um, I like this move a lot. I mean, Hurdle is a guy, he can play defensively. He's got lots of offensive talent. He can take face-offs. Um, his health, though, is a bit of a question, isn't it? Yeah, they're not 100% sure when he'll return. Uh, I've heard people say they think he'll be back before playoffs. Yeah, and this is not just a addition for one season. This guy just signed a long-term deal in San Jose. By the way, the Sharks did eat 17% of that contract, so he comes in at a shade under 7 mil now, which is, I think, pretty digestible for a guy who's probably still got some good hockey left in him. Yeah, a little perplexed uh, from the San Jose Sharks side of things. Um, it did look like they were going full rebuild, and then they signed Hurdle for an eight-year deal and uh, just to turn around and, and deal him and have to retain salary. So I'm not quite sure what was going on there. But either way, San Jose has entered full teardown, and Vegas is, is looking better for it. I bet Logan Couture is lo looking around the locker room thinking, uh, guys, uh, can you get me out of here too? Because it's going to be a tire fire in San Jose for the next few seasons at yep. least. Tanking in the shark tank. So next up, we do have to talk about the Carolina Hurricanes. They arguably landed the biggest fish of all in Jake Gensel. Now, this is a team that really needs some scoring help, especially in the playoffs. Last year, losing a lot of games by one goal didn't seem to have that push. Jake Gensel is the kind of player that can uh, score those goals in those times. Yes, the kid from Omaha, Nebraska, two-time 40-goal scorer, Jake Gensel. And how about that playoff pedigree, point-per-game player, 58 games played, 58 points scored. So the only question is, is he going to come back at 100% health? He has been out for a while now but it sounds like he's skating again so I like it this is a team that has not scored in the playoffs and they got a guy who's scored every time he's been in the playoffs yeah yeah I'm excited for this they also picked up Evgeny Kuznetsov a guy who was kind of on the outs with the Washington Capitals can they reclaim this player can he get back to his former form this one really sort of surprised me I'm happy that he's back in the NHL um, but I'm just not sure where he's going to fit in, in Carolina well, I know exactly where they're hoping he's going to fit in. They don't. They need a second-line centerman because the Jesperi Kotkaniemi experiment has not been a success. So I like this. It's a big swing, a team that has not traditionally taken big swings. I feel like they want to really go for it this year, and I could see this working out. I mean, he was a great player for the Caps in their cup run. I know that was a while ago, but he's going to come in motivated, and I, I don't know. I like it. I think Caroline is finally being bold. Yeah, yeah, it's certainly bold. It is not without its risks. Uh, he has been in and out of the player assistance program. Um, hopefully those issues are behind him, and uh, he can have a great stretch run and playoff uh, run. But uh, we will see. We will see. Uh, I am looking forward to whether or not uh, he does the bird man in the playoffs. Another thing I bet you're looking forward to is your Winnipeg Jets, John, because I think they also are one of the teams that really did a nice job reloading, getting ready for the playoffs with some key veterans. 
That's right. And they started early by picking up Sean Monahan before the All-Star game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a big move. A bit of a surprise. Um, I like the move. Sean Monaghan is is fitting in splendidly in Winnipeg. He's really fitting into the bonus system well. Um, he can play kind of anywhere, pulls a lot of weight around. Um, yeah, great move. And how about the acquisition of Tyler Toffoli from the New Jersey Devils? Yeah, well, he's been, you know, such a consistent scorer throughout his career. He's won a Stanley Cup with the Los Angeles Kings. He was part of that big Montreal Canadiens drive where they went to the finals as well, actually scoring a big goal in Winnipeg to knock them out. Uh, I love it. I think this is a guy who's always better come playoff time and exactly what the Jets needed, another threat from the wing. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he can help out on the on the power play too. It's been struggling a lot this season. So hopefully he can get that going and really help the Jets uh, in their push into the playoffs. And John, your Winnipeg Jets also picked up Colin Miller, a bit of a depth defenseman. Yeah, a bit of a depth defenseman, a little insurance back there. It doesn't hurt to have too many defensemen. So I don't mind that move either. Yeah, if things go south uh, back end, they'll be calling him in at some point, I'm sure. And arguably one of the biggest deals took place between the Colorado Avalanche and the Buffalo Sabres. The Avalanche acquired Casey Middlestat and the Sabres got Bo Byram. What do we think of this deal? Nobody saw this one coming, did they? No, no, this is a surprise. Yeah, now Mark, I remember in our mid-season show, you were really curious to see who Joe Sackick would get as that number two center. Is Casey Middlestad the answer? I have questions. I'm not questioning the guy's talent. I just wonder when it gets a little bit harder to score. He's not the kind of guy he likes to go into traffic. He's not the biggest body. He's not small either, but he kind of plays small. I'm just wondering as it gets harder in the playoffs, will he be that guy? Will he be the Nazem Kadri type of player that mm. the you know the Avs had in their first cup run? I'm not sure. We'll see. Yeah, I mean, very little playoff experience here, right? So, you know, it's a bit of a risk, uh, but I think he's a talented uh, player. He's still young. Yeah, he's 25 years old. He's yeah. leading the Sabres uh, in scoring yeah. at the time of the trade. Yeah, for sure. So I think he's still got some room to grow. Uh, hopefully he's, he's ready for the playoffs, though. They gave up a lot in Bo Byram, though. Yes. Well, the thing with Bo Byram is the concussion issues have plagued him throughout his career. Uh, he, we've seen flashes of what he can be. That playoff run, he was outstanding. I like it from the perspective of the Buffalo Sabres. Look at what they're now building on their blue line. They already had Darlene in power. Now they bring in Byram. If he stays healthy, that's going to be a terrifying top three. And what about some of the other moves that the Colorado Avalanche made? Well, the Avs had been hoping that Ryan Johansson might have been an answer for that second line center spot. Turns out not so. So they ship him out to the Philadelphia Flyers. um, And he's since been waived. So uh, yeah, goodbye, Ryan Joe. Um, And to replace Bone Byram, they get Sean Walker. Um, So that's going to fill that gap in the the defense core. I really like this move. Yeah, he's been such a big part of the story in Philadelphia and their unexpected rise to a playoff contention. He was the coveted right-handed D that a lot of teams were trying to get, and I think Colorado did well to get him. Yeah, good defenseman, good shot blocker. Yeah, he's also one of the leaders in rush scoring chances created, so he's going to fit right into that high-octane Colorado Avalanche offense. Yeah, and they added a little sandpaper as well to help them in their playoff run, didn't they? That's right. They picked up Jakob Trennan from the Seattle Kraken and Brendan Duhane from the Minnesota Wild. Yep, you can never have enough good foot soldiers for a deep playoff run, and they are expecting to go deep. Yeah, Colorado is looking primed for for a nice playoff run, but uh, they got some tough competition there in the West, so it's going to be great to watch this all play out. And how about the Dallas Stars? Now, they weren't that busy at the deadline, were they? They weren't. uh, They may not have gotten quantity, but they certainly got some quality in Chris Tanev, who is an absolute beast. His game translates so well to playoff hockey. I love it on the part of Dallas. Yeah, I mean, this was a team that already had a really stacked decor. This just makes it even even scarier. Uh, This is a real contender, I would say. Yeah, it ended up being a bit of a fire sale in Calgary. They've had a tough year. Yes, uh, they traded Elias Lindholm to Vancouver. Vancouver is looking all the stronger for having him. Uh, big move, big move. Uh, yeah, that was huge yeah. getting him, but he hasn't quite fit in the way I thought he would. No, there was actually talk of them flipping him to Boston and chasing Getzel. That never materialized, so that might be a little bit awkward. He's down on the third line now. We'll see how that works. And the Flames ended up holding on to uh, Markstrom in net. Yes, there was some talk of him being dealt out to the New Jersey Devils, who do need a goaltender. Um, doesn't look like that's going to happen this season, but maybe something for the future. Yeah, I was slightly surprised that that was the only big move that the Vancouver Canucks did, but maybe they're content to stay in Pat. Could be. Uh, well, you know what? We've talked about a lot of Western Canadian teams making moves. There is one more that made some moves, and that's the Edmonton Oilers. Of course, they have cup aspirations with that big 16-game winning streak earlier in the year. What do you guys think about what they did? 
I mean, they picked up Adam Henrique from the Anaheim Ducks. Pretty solid player, I would say. Uh, he can play in a bunch of different positions. I think he is going to help out. Not a huge splash, though. Yeah, I really like Adam Henrique from the time when he came into the league with the New Jersey Devils. I thought he was a loyal foot soldier for the Anaheim Ducks, and he gives him some nice two-way play, I think. Yeah, no, he's a guy that you can plug in on a power play unit. He's got decent hands in front. He's a responsible 200-foot player. Also included in that deal was Sam Carrick. Here's a guy who plays with a lot of sandpaper, skates well for a big man, and the Oilers were kind of small in their bottom six, so this will be a guy who will be helpful in the playoffs as well. I expected a lot more additions for their blue line, but in the end, they only bring in Troy Stetcher. Yeah, I mean, last year they brought in Matthias Ekholm. That was a huge move, great move. Um, nothing quite paralleling that this year. Is this going to be enough to really put them over the top in the playoffs? I'm very underwhelmed. I'm the one who picked the Oilers to win the Cup. I was assuming that they would actually add another top four defender before the end of the year. And I think they really dropped the ball on this one because here's a team that's in win-now mode. Leon Dreisaitl, next summer, not this coming summer, the next summer, he's going to be UFA. If the Oilers don't make a run this year or next year, uh, he could leave town and then next year Connor's up. So I don't know. I think the Oilers were a little bit too conservative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big year, a lot riding on it. And a lot riding on your cup pick here, Mark. So we'll see how this all plays out. Let's move over to the Eastern Conference and talk about the Florida Panthers. What do you guys think of their moves at the deadline? Well, I think that one of the themes of this year's trade deadline was the buyers getting good value. And I think one of the best examples of that is Florida getting Tarasenko for a couple of, you know, no first rounders in there. I think it was like a second and a third or something. That's that's great value for a guy of his pedigree. And it sounds like he was a very, very happy to go there. His wife and his children live in Florida. Um, and let's not forget, this guy's a former Stanley Cup winner with the Blues as well. Yeah, I think he fits in perfectly with the Florida Panthers. He can score big goals. Uh, he can throw the body around a little bit. He may not be what he used to be. He's had some injuries over the last few years, uh, but I do think he's going to be a significant contributor here. Another noteworthy name they picked up, uh, Kyle Pozo, the former captain of the Buffalo Sabres, is finally packing his bags, and he's finally going to get some playoff action in. Yeah, I'd love to see uh, them uh, win a cup for Kyle. Okay, well, let's move down the road here to Tampa, Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, they have made a couple moves in their bid to stay relevant in the Stanley Cup playoff race. Uh, what have they done here? That's right. They're clinging on to the last wild card spot in the East, and they brought in Anthony Duclair from the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, Duclair is such a dynamic skater. He just, I don't know, there's something missing in his game. It never really works out for him, but who knows? Maybe he'll catch lightning in a bottle and uh, be that little spark that the lightning need in their run. And they also brought in Matt Dumba from the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah, I mean, Dumba's a guy, he's bumped around the league a little bit. I feel like he's never quite lived up to his potential, but he gets another crack at things here in Tampa Bay, and hopefully he gets some playoff uh, experience here under his belt. Yeah, he's never really been the same since that major pectoral injury, but still a serviceable NHL defender who, for a fifth-round pick, I think pretty good value. Let's move along to a team that can often make big splashes at the trade deadline, the New York Rangers, but they were a little bit quiet this year. Yes, quite quiet, uh, uncharacteristically. Last year, they went out and got Patrick Kane. That didn't quite pan out. This year, they kind of filled a, a bit of a void in their lineup with the injury of Philip Heedle. They went out and got Alex Wendberg. Uh, what do you think about this year, Mark? I really like this addition. I know he's not a big offensive star, but this guy is solid in the faceoff dot, very responsible defensively, and he can ship in a little bit of offense here and there. I think exactly what the Rangers needed for their third line center role. And they also picked up Jack Roslovic. Yeah, Jack Roslovic is another guy. I don't think his career has panned out quite the way uh, people planned. Uh, he's been okay. He's a decent depth piece, but I don't expect they're going to get a ton of production out of him in the playoffs. The Rangers also picked up Chad Ruhedel, a depth defenseman. Um, not a bad move. No, no, no. But again, not overwhelmingly uh, significant moves here. A quiet deadline for the Rangers. Speaking of quiet deadlines, we've got to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, Did they okay. do enough at the deadline? Yeah, well, this was my cup pick. I was hoping for a little more activity here. Um, what do we think about these moves? They added some depth here and there. That's right. I mean, they got a little bit of sandpaper yeah. on the blue line, Labushkin, and uh, Joel Edmondson, uh, one of your favorites, Mark. Yeah, I'll always have fond memories of Joel Edmondson. He was one of the big four defenders for the Habs when they made their deep run a few years back, but he's not the same guy anymore. He's had back injuries. He's slowed down quite a bit. I hope he stays healthy. I think when the refs put away the whistles, he'll be a little bit more effective, you know, kill some penalties. But how many bottom pairing defensemen can the Leafs have? They don't have enough top four defenders. That's my big question for them. They also picked up a forward in Connor Dewar from the Minnesota Wild. 
Yeah, again, another depth move. They seem to have a lot of lower depth on the team, but not a lot of high-end scoring talent to back up the big guns there. What do you think, Mark? Well, I don't know. You know, it's a do-or-die year for the Leafs, and uh, I don't think Connor's going to get it done for them. Another Atlantic team that didn't make too many waves at the trade deadline was the Boston Bruins. Well, funny you should say that because they came within a whisker of making a tidal wave kind of trade. Sounds like Linus Allmark nixed a deal out of town to the Los Angeles Kings. And the rumor was that Mr. Pierre Dubois, Pierre-Luc, was going to be packing his bags and heading back east. Maybe that one re- re-emerges in the summertime, but that would have been a blockbuster. Yeah, that's a shame. That would have been huge for both teams. Yeah, for sure. But the Boston Bruins do end up getting Pat Maroon. Um, this is a guy, he's had a lot of playoff experience, been on some cup contenders, but he is on the tail end of his career. I'm not sure how much he has left. does seem like a very Boston Bruins kind of move, though, doesn't it? Could be a little bit awkward when he runs into play-by-play man Jack Edwards, though. I wanted to ask you guys about the New Jersey Devils. Uh, big shock, this team looks like they're not going to make the playoffs, but they were busy making some goaltending moves. Yeah, where was this two months ago? Uh, They bring in two new goaltenders. So they kick it off by getting Jake Allen from the Montreal Canadiens for a third round pick. Good veteran guy having a bit of an off year, but they were in a weird system of three goalies in Montreal. So we'll see what he has. Yeah, I'm not quite sure this is the answer for their woes there in New Jersey, but maybe they'll revisit the the goaltending situation in the summer. Uh, as we mentioned, maybe th- maybe they're looking at Markstrom. Uh, that would be a much better that fit. That would be huge. Yeah. Now, they also did bring in Kakinen from the San Jose Sharks. And also shipping out Vitek Banachek, who is, well, one of the, part of the problem in New Jersey. So I like that they're coming in with some new guys. I guess they're going to evaluate them for the end of the year here and see what they have to do in the summer. Maybe another big move to come. And it looks like yours truly will have to do a Stanley Cup pick over again. Yeah. Whoa, you're the giving Jeff yourself Roland another one. Of death. Okay, yeah. okay. This is becoming a bit of a thing, Jeff. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. Uh, we will be back pretty soon here with our stretch run report. We'll be breaking down the bubble teams and perhaps some of the divisional battles, depending on how everything shakes down here over the next little while. Yeah, so stay tuned. We'll be right back in about a week or two. Exciting times ahead for you NHL fans. I cannot wait. Thanks for listening, everybody. And I hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I, I, I hope you had yourselves a time. Hope you had yourselves a time. Hope, hope you had time. Time, time, selves a time. You had, hope, hope you had yourselves a time. Well, I hope you had, hope, selves a time. Hope, time, time. Hope you had, hope you had, hope you had a time, time.